Wedding season is upon us, and I have been invited to a fancy wedding. And so we are making some fancy dresses. <laughs> I feel like I'm not the only one who has been invited to a formal affair this summer. So I think this is really exciting and fun. You saw how much fun I had making my birthday dress last year. A little stressful, not gonna lie, a little stressful. <laughs> but we are applying some similar techniques and we are gonna do it again. I have been invited to a wedding. There are two formal events for said wedding. And so I need two dresses. This is probably gonna be a two part video, but we're gonna start with one dress today and then I'll show you the next one once I make it. So my style for fancy events, or it's just my style period, is classic, feminine, a little flirty. I do like color despite the fact that I wear black in a lot of my videos. <laughs> I think you talk about the dresses that I make though, I like color. And so that's what we're going for. I also really love vintage inspired fashion. I don't think you all know that about me. So both of my designs are pulling from vintage Hollywood. I love the 50s and the 60s specifically. I like Audrey Hepburn. I like Dior dresses from that time period. Grace Kelly, Joyce Bryant. I love the full skirt. We do need to be practical because I'm taking a carry-on and a backpack. So <laughs> we can only have so much poop. <laughs> Well, the first dress is definitely inspired by all of this put together and it's actually going to be pretty simple. The fabric is going to be doing most of the heavy lifting. For the first dress, I'm just going to be doing a simple strapless bodice with a gourd circle skirt. The patterns I'm going to be using are vintage inspired patterns and I'm going to be using the Stanwick skirt as well as the L'Amour dress bodice by Charm Patterns. For the first dress, this is my fabric. This is the most expensive fabric I have ever bought as well. <laughs> so I'm a little nervous about cutting into it. It's described as a pink and gold brocade. I disagree because that is clearly silver and this is purple, not pink, but whatever. I'm very excited. Like I said, the fabric is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And then for the lining, very simple. I'm just going to be using purple cotton. I have also extended my pattern to be T length because the original Stanwick skirt comes like just below the knee, but I wanted to add six inches, but now I'm thinking seven inches because I didn't account for seam allowance <laughs> and that's gonna make it T, T length on me. I'm five, five and a half, by the way, if you need a reference. So I think that's it. Let's get started. I gotta cut the fabric. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I can do it. I can do it. So the first step to creating the bodice is to cut out the pretty fabric, an underlining, and a lining. If you don't want to do an underlining, you can just interface the pretty fabric, but I decided to do both. And then I am going to baste the underlining to the lining, or I'm uh, sorry, underlining to the main fabric. And I've actually already done it on this base. I've just been hand basting it, but you can do it by a machine. And then once that's done, this is the layer that will actually have the boning and the boning channeling in it. And so it's a little thick. You do have three layers of dress, <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> I decided also to serge all of the um, vertical seams on the lining and underlining, and then all the seams on the brocade fabric just because it frayed so much. But I am almost done doing all of my hand basting, and then it will be assembly time. This is what my bodice is looking like. So now that this is done, I need to do all the exact same steps to the lining. So attach all the pieces and press the seam allowances open. And then I can put in the boning channeling, but I'm actually just using bias tape because I did not buy boning channeling. <laughs> but let me do that and then, then it gets exciting. So 
So everything that I did to the main bodice, I also did to the lining. So as you can see, I just sewed up the side seams and I was going to put the casing in for the boning. And then it occurred to me, I have sewn boning. Why am I putting casing into this? <laughs> I was like, well, maybe if you want to swap it out for still boning, I'm not going to I'm not gonna wanna do that like now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sew the boning directly to the lining. So I'll be putting it in where I have my lines drawn and then along all the seams except the center seam. And then I burn the ends of mine just to round them out so that they're not stabbing me while they're in there. <laughs> and because I'm doing sewing boning, I just make sure I sew it um, within the seam allowance of, like on the edges, I just make sure I sew it like starting 5 eighths of an inch down. So let's do it. The lining is in um, and the all the boning is in, the lining is in, so all I have to do now is flip it right sides out and understitch it. And I think the bodice is done. Yes, <laughs> the bodice is done. <laughs> then we move on to the skirt. Now that the bodice is done, very excited. The next step is to move on to the skirt. For the skirt, I cut out the lining as well as my main fabric. And the only difference is I think I made the lining like an inch or so shorter. And yeah, so I searched all the vertical seams on both fabrics and now I need to sew up the side seams. So I'm gonna do the lining first, which is pinned right here, and then I'll do the pretty fabric. I just, we need, I just need like a moment for you to really appreciate what I'm about to show you. This is amazing. <laughs> I can't even get it. Can I get the full thing in the shot? No, but oh my God. <laughs> okay, so the skirt is finished. <laughs> oh, it's fully, it's aligned. I just basted the lining inside. All that's left is I need to put the bodice, attach the bodice in the lining and pop the zip in. It has to hang overnight for I think 24 hours and then I can hand everything, but we're almost done. Oh, I need to put the waist day in. I almost forgot that. Also, these are fabric belt making kits and a lot of vintage gowns have belts. So, or they have like definitely defined waistbands. And so I haven't decided if I am going to add a belt or not. I think I am, but it's gonna be like a last minute decision. So you'll see, but I'm very excited. Oh my God. It's got me together. Okay, let me attach everything. Attach the bodice to the skirt and put the zipper in. All right, the zip is in and I hand sewed the lining and all the other pieces. She's currently hanging right now so that it can be hemmed, but I'm pretty proud of how it looks. I'm turning around so you can see. So this is what it looks like from the front. To hem it, I'm going to hem the brocade layer um, normally, just like a fold over hem. And, but the lining layer, I'm gonna use this horsehair braid. You can see it's pretty voluminous now. I've decided to opt out of the petticoat because again, this this is a lot to shove into a, um, a carry-on. <laughs> so I'm gonna opt out of that. And then I'm working on the waist day, which is just this piece of ribbon. I did decide to do this last night. So all I did was cut a piece of ribbon that was the 
length of my waist plus two inches and I folded in um, half an inch twice and then hand sewed hook and eyes to it and then I have to attach this waist day to the waist of the dress and I'll show you when I do that but that's kind of it I'm gonna be honest like this is the main thing according to my checklist I just have three things left to do so I think I'm gonna do the waist day first and then work on the belt Okay, so I have the dress on the table in front of me laid out because um, otherwise the dress would be in my lap while I was trying to sew it and that's not really conducive to <laughs> a good project. <laughs> so I have pinned the waist stay in. I forgot to say when I sewed the lining in, I added these straps so that, this is just ribbon, so that I can hang the dress up on a hanger and all I did was sew it to the seam allowance and then sew it in the lining. But the waist stays in. And so I have it pinned at the side seams, at the center front, and then I have it pinned about two inches inward of the um, zipper. Let me fix the lighting real quick. Hold on. Um, of the zipper, just so that it relieves some stress from the zipper. And I'm just gonna hand sew all along the seam. I may just tack it. I think I'm just tack it. Never mind. I'm gonna <laughs> tack it in each of the points <laughs> and then it will be in and then I'll work on the belt. Waist day is in. I tried it on. Not gonna lie, it's a little tight. <laughs> so <laughs> if I have time, I'm gonna take it out and put in some elastic, but if I don't, I'm not gonna stress it. And then I also had time to sew on a label. So next is just hemming it and then it's done. Oh, I just put that together. <laughs> oh, yay! <laughs> okay, let me hem it. Um, oh, I haven't redone the belt. I, need, I mean, but the actual dress is done. So, yeah. I'm, yeah, wow. Okay, okay, we're almost there. <laughs> Editing Chan here. I apparently did not record an outro, and that was apparently the last clip I recorded. <laughs> just fell off the place of the earth. But I did hem the dress just like I said I was going to. And then when I say fix the belt, I just remade the belt and added four inches to the length. And that's it. That's all that happened. So if you like this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe. And here are the final shots of me in the dress. See you all next time. Bye.